ready to drop the trans axle so I'm going to unbolt it and then I just wanted to show what I did so I've got my my hydro hydraulic jack set up I've got a jack adapter that I bought on eBay a few years ago thinking I'd never use it again but here I am so you can see the chain hanging down that's a, a chain that wraps around the trans axle and bolts back onto the jack adapter so a little yeah you know, a little nice nice thing to have unbolting the uh, the uh, trans axle bolt so there's one here this is uh, from the uh, uh, passenger side uh, hub looking toward the uh, driver side there's uh, one bolt you can see my shim is holding up really well the engines dropped there is another bolt let's see if I can get it right there there's another bolt there and there's another bolt up there those are all the four from this side and there's two from the driver's side now I'm just going to start to unbolt the uh, uh, the mounting bolts for the transaxle to the uh, to the engine. So there are two in here. So you can see one. Um, I've, I've got my breaker bar and uh, an extender through there. You can it's it's in there somewhere. Okay, 17 mL. There's another one. You can see right. You maybe can't see right there, but right where my finger is moving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the. Power to the solenoid, it slips through here. I'm just going to make a note through this little gap uh, under the, the, the plastic uh, cover, uh, the intake manifold. So, just I had to pop, pull it out because uh, it'll, it'll break off when I drop the training. And then you can see now that transaxle is basically popped off and it's ready to go. All right, I uh, dropped the transmission, it wasn't too hard, I just, just kind of you know, jiggle it and wiggle it. Uh, the problem I talked about before with the, the mount, the the it was con the transaxle was actually connected to the mount. I had to take it out, and then the, the tranny dropped. Um, the transaxle dropped, and there it is. So, um, all right, happy about that. So now I'm going to change the clutch, and uh, we'll get moving. From below the car, that's the clutch. I'm just going to remove all these 12 millimeter bolts. And then uh, that'll expose the uh, uh, the flywheel, which you can see the the gears are on the flywheel there. We're going to take that off too, and I'm going to get it machined. The clutch spins, right? And you can't put the car in gear because you'll squirt fluid. You'll squirt fluid out of the slave cylinder. It would be a real mess. So what you want to do is um, you wouldn't squirt fluid out of there you would just you would extend the slave cylinder you need to pop back in but okay so just put the uh, clutch at like 10 o'clock the, the the sorry the bolt you're about to, to take off from below and that'll that'll be like a top-down center sort of setting and the bolts will come right out all right, clutch is all unbolted now just take a screwdriver pry bar and just gently pop that now watch out these clutches are heavy okay so um, uh, just be careful tip for removing these bolts they're really really torqued on hard so if you lay the wrench uh, this way across the flywheel and then hammer you'll have uh, be able to get it off there's the flywheel I'm gonna take this off because uh, you should always machine a flywheel if you're putting a new clutch on so I'm gonna do that uh, there are eight 12 point uh, 14 mil bolts okay I've, I my socket suddenly goes to 13 12 point uh, socket so I'm gonna to have to get one to put that back on um, I'm, I'm mentioning that because you want to torque these to uh, to exactly the right spec so you really need a socket set and a uh, uh, a torque wrench to do that getting them off no problem I'm just using my uh, thing my wrench <laughs> I've taken this flywheel off I got it machined so I took it into the machine shop and they smooth it and rough it so you can, you can kind of see the rough that, that's important to uh, grip the, the uh, clutch plate. Uh, the second thing, uh, new flywheel bolts, mounting bolts, get those, they're expensive, but, but do. I guess you can go without them, but you know, I'd rather be safe. Also, red thread locker, you apply it to the bolts, and then uh, that, that's the high strength um, mounting bolt, that he, threaded uh, fastener adhesive, okay? So that, that's the, that, that's, that'll keep the bolts in there super tight. I've got the flywheel back on. Um, I put a drop of thread lock in the middle of each of the bolts and, and inserted them. To, and then I, I torqued them on to the, the spec in the owner's or the I guess repair manual. Uh, to, the flywheel 
moves. So I just jam a uh, screwdriver in right there, and that'll prevent the, uh, the wheel from turning while you torque these in. I'm reinstalling the clutch now onto the engine. I just wanted to uh, talk about it beforehand inside where it's quiet. Um, just to recap how a clutch works. So if you're inside the car, you use your left foot to press the clutch pedal. That trans transmits power through uh, hydraulic uh, lines. Uh, and I talked about that, the clutch line in, in video two, I think. And that sends uh, power through the clutch slave cylinder uh, or re clutch release cylinder. Sends force, I should say, through the cylinder. A little little pin pops out, and it and it rotates a uh, uh, the clutch fork. It's a lever that's inside of the transaxle. That puts downward pressure onto the clutch release bearing or throw out bearing, depending who you speak to, and that pushes these fingers down uh, on the top of the pressure plate, and that causes the clutch disc to then lift up off of the flywheel. So as the engine spins, uh, there's no more uh, power being transmitted into, you know, onto the, uh, onto the clutch disc that, that turns the wheels of the car. So to reinstall all these components, you start with the clutch alignment tool. It's splined and the splines match up with the inside of the, the clutch disc. Um, uh, so insert the, the tool into the disc and then the whole assembly will, will go into the, the female receiving end on the, on, the, uh, on the engine. Okay, so the clutch disc aligns perfectly with the flywheel um, that, that we just mounted back and bolted onto the, the engine. So with that in place, then you want to get the uh, clutch pressure plate installed. Before you do that though, take, um, take a good amount of time, use a lot of brake cleaner and acetone to completely remove all the gunk off the um, off this part of the pressure plate so that was that was on there just from transit and from the manufacturing process. Get it nice and clean. Um, you need to do that because this that, that matches up with the, uh, the, the clutch disc and you want it to operate properly. So put red thread lock onto the, the mounting bolts that um, uh, that you've, you've got there. Uh, the, you want the thread thread lock to make sure that this is um, you know installed like really strongly onto the uh, onto the engine. Hand tighten each of the bolts, okay, and then use a crisscross pattern to, to torque them in. So tighten this bolt down, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, etc. Okay, and then give it one more time around just to make sure everything's in there uh, uh, equally strong and uh, and, and even. Um, at that point, you can remove the alignment tool um, because the alignment, the pressure plate is putting pressure on the uh, on the disc and everything's fine. You then um, go into the transaxle and the transaxle will have a, a shaft coming up through it and on top of that shaft will be a, uh, a throw out bearing and then the throw out bearing will be connected to that, that lever called the, the, the clutch fork, okay? So you remove the old clutch um, throw out bearing. Um, it really is you. It's a little metal clip on there, and then you start to to lubricate the shaft and the and the parts inside the the transmission. Okay, so first um, you you'll have a shaft coming up. It'll have a smooth part where the throw bearing uh, runs up and down. Then it'll have a splined shaft that then will go through here. Okay, so lubricate both of those. So lubricate the uh, the smooth side and lubricate the spline. Don't over lubricate because you don't want um, a goop getting back into the middle of the, uh, the, the, the clutch assembly itself and onto the, the clutch disc especially. Uh, you'll then reinstall the clutch throw out bearing. So again, take a little lubricant. And lubric this high temperature, high pressure uh, lubricant will come with all clutches. If it doesn't, just, just go buy some. Um, you lubricate the, uh, the end of the throw out bearing, or you can, you can put a bit on here. So this throw out bearing then can just, just rotate nicely on the, on the throw out bearing. And then also on the inside of the, the uh, transaxle will be where, the, where the, the clutch fork pivots. It pivots on a, a clutch fork pivot ball, the aptly named clutch fork pivot ball. So put a little bit of lubricant on that. Um, and then what you'll do is uh, then take the transaxle, put it back onto a jack with the transmission jack adapter, ideally, and you'll basically lift it up um, into the engine and position the, tra the, the shaft from the transaxle to go right through here, okay? And you might have to wiggle a little bit, but uh, I think you'll, you'll get it in there without too much trouble because uh, you'll have the right tools and then bolt it up and you're ready to go. So I'll show that now. 
This is the inside of the transaxle, so I've cleaned all this off. I sprayed brake cleaner all around it and just got rid of the dust and, and as much gunk as I can. This, is, I'll just go quickly, that is the, the drive shaft or the shaft that comes out of the transaxle. So when the clutch is engaged, this spins and it transmits its power over to the drive axle here and on the other side turns your wheels. Uh, this is the, the throw up bearing, as I mentioned before. That's the new one. It's not been attached yet to the, uh, to the fork. That's the fork. Um, when you press the clutch foot pedal inside the car, and the, the slave cylinder pushes this down and you can see it see it move on the inside and it moves the, the throw up bearing back and forth. I'll take that off and you can see the, clip, the, the new throw up bearing's got uh, two little springs on it and those just attach onto the inside of the, the fork. I'll pull that out. Okay, so they just attach, attaches in uh, like, like that and lubricate this side with the grease. So you'll lubricate on that subject, the shaft a little bit, you'll lubricate this because the throw up bearing goes back and forth and needs to uh, come out quickly. That's the pivot ball, uh, lubricate that. Um, and then I also brake cleaned this and you can see that that's uh, nice and shiny now and I, I, break, I cleaned the front of that. Uh, there's still grease on there from the previous um, application so yeah, it does last a long time. Then when you get this installed, the clutch pressure plate will be, this will be mounted on the engine, but on the inside of the transaxle it would look like that, and then that would compress the plate, the flat end toward the flywheel, uh, protruding end in, so it goes on, you can see the splined ends going into the uh, clutch, and there it goes, so this will get, through this holes, that will get mounted onto the engine. Uh, and, and, and the flywheel would be here grabbing onto the clutch plate, okay? So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to take a video of putting all that up, uh, it's pretty straightforward.